In the rapidly evolving landscape of India's financial sector, a new battlefront is emerging. The traditional banking system versus big tech companies. On the one hand, the government seems to be suspicious of the intent of global fintechs like GPay of Google. There were efforts in Modi 2.0 to store all data of Indians in India-based servers because the government suspected that MNCs like Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc. were misusing our data. On the other, the Reserve Bank of India, or RBI, has recently taken strong disciplinary actions against India-based fintechs like Paytm, Ola Finance, and Manapuram Finance. For millions of Indians, platforms like Paytm and Ola have become integral to daily life, offering convenience and accessibility that traditional banks often struggle to match. Ola had recently announced uh, it would dump Google Maps and incorporate the Made in India navigation tool Navic. Shouldn't the government throw its weight behind such business initiatives based in India? What is the message the Modi government is sending across? Is it for Swadeshi or against Swadeshi? The squirrels posed this question to three market experts. Financial risk manager Yerram Raju, tax consultant Rajiv Kumar, and ex-CFO of an MNC, Shyamal Chakraborty, all refused to speak a word against the RBI. Lately, when you see the imposition of the regulations, hmm. RBI is neutral among all the financial institutions. They did not spare any of either the big banks or the NBFCs or the fintechs when a question of violation of their regulations came into being. However, it cannot be denied that in the tussle between banks and fintechs, the ease of accessing small credits from fintechs is hurting the credit card business. That, in turn, is hurting the banks. Because even though, let's say, HDFC Bank and HDFC Credit Cards are separate companies, in the joint balance sheet, even if the bank is strong but the credit cards are not, then there is an overall slump in the HDFC plan. The experts say, be that as it may, the RBI cannot look the other way just because a fintech company happens to be Desi. In today's scenario, terror funding, drug trafficking, money laundering, etc. are serious issues. In today's uh, scenario, economic scenario, like India is going through, and, and the kind of, you know, uh, there's technology into financial sector, which again has so many, you know, uh, things which needs to be taken into account. There are terror funding related issues. There are money laundering issues. So KYC is something which cannot be questioned at all. The banks are strictly regulated to check such misuse and hence, the fintechs also should be. If the RBI did not take action against GPay, PhonePay, Amazon Pay, etc., maybe they did not do what Paytm did with its wallet. If you see the structure of most of these companies, they have formed independent private limited company under the same group. Now, while all these independent companies may seem like they are compliant, um, but as a group, they will definitely be violating uh, those nuances uh, and some of the other laws uh, of the of uh, the Reserve Bank of India. Maybe the global fintechs KYCs were clean. Further, note that the RBI is not the only authority that has found Paytm wrong. On 18 September 2020, Paytm's app was unlisted from Google Play, allegedly because the Indian firm violated Play Store's gambling policy. The RBI has imposed fines on payment system operators, Visa Worldwide, Ola Financial Services, and Manapuram Finance for deficiencies in regulatory compliance. Experts also say that if banks are a larger economic system, that fintechs cannot be allowed to hurt. At the same time, banks have to comply with more regulations too. They say the totality of the regulatory mechanism is quite balanced. 
where do you stand in this debate?